welcome to another installment of our deck introduction series, featuring Keliseth Tempo Rogue. Tempo Rogue was a theoretical archetype that saw some glory moments in the early days, in a time where Harvest Golem was a staple three drop, but never with the same level of success as Miracle Rogue. Three years later, in the vacuum of aggro decks left behind by the Pirate Warrior nerf, a Keliseth empowered Tempo Rogue archetype rose to become one of the three strongest decks in the Knight of the Frozen Throne meta, next to the Highlander Priest and Jade Druid. The additions of Vile Spine Slayer, Cobalt Scalebane, and Bone Mare gave the deck a more consistent strategy with strong removal options, paving the way for lethal bursts of damage. With the introduction of Corridor Creeper, Tempo Rogue continues to find popularity as arguably the strongest Keliseth deck being climbed with both on the ladder and in tournaments. Though the archetype is not among the new list to find a home in the Kobolds and Catacombs meta, it still remains a tier 1 ladder deck as of the most recent meta snapshot, and one of the most reliable decks for tournament play. Keliseth Tempo Rogue is played as a mid-range deck with a control emphasis in the early stages of the game. You're building power on the board until enough has been established to close out the game. In some ways, this strategy is similar to mid-range Hunter with an early game plan that relies on cards like Firefly to control the first turns of the game. The clear distinction between the two is the range of removal options between the two mid-range decks. While Hunter relies on beast synergies and stickier minions to retain a board presence, Tempo Rogue is equipped with Backstab and SI7 Agent to remove any minions that threaten to remove your early game advantage. This ties in with the deck's strategy of building a board and threatening damage every turn with growing severity. The more aggressive your draws allow you to play, the greater success your deck will have in every matchup. The ultimate opener for this deck is playing Prince Keliseth on turn 2 or turn 1 with coin. Getting to Shadow Step Prince Keliseth back into your hand allows you to reapply the buff across your entire deck promising a strong series of turns from turn 3 onwards, and increasing your overall win rate in every match. This may make mulliganing for Prince Keliseth in every opening hand an obvious choice, but always hold on to your one-mana cards such as Swash Burglar and Firefly so that you're guaranteed an opening play. Board superiority is Tempo Rogue's most successful win condition, and one that should be respected over the potential power of Keliseth in your opening hand. Corridor Creeper, as an addition to the archetype, had a strong debut in the Trinity series, and is seeing high legend results by players like Horo, but it should also not replace your one-drops as cards to keep in your opening hand. Control and mid-range decks give Tempo Rogue a strong playing field for the deck to climb well, with particular success against decks such as Keliseth and Control Warlock, Ramp Druid, and Exodia Mage. Vilespine Slayer continues to be one of the most important anti-control cards in the deck, let alone the Rogue class. It sees the most value in giving Tempo Rogue big swing turns that establish a minion while removing another, similar to SI7 Agent. Cards like Firefly, Shadow Step, and Backstab ensure the deck has access to combo activators that can assassinate large threats that would otherwise compromise the Tempo Rogue game plan. You should begin preparing to end the game by around turn 8 with access to Vilespine Slayer to clear the way for Leroy Jenkins and Cold Blood to ideally lethal the opponent, and Bone Mare to cement your board position. Regardless the variant of Tempo Row used, the deck will typically become the aggressor in the mid-game and seek to finish the opponent by around turn 9. With only the Elven Minstrel as a draw engine, the greatest value the deck achieves in a game will depend greatly on how your draws can bring the opponent's life total to zero. In the opening turns, prioritize establishing Firefly over pirates such as South Sea Deckhand or Swash Burglar until you've played Prince Keliseth. As a tempo deck, we rely on swing turns and board retention to accumulate damage against our opponent over time. A buffed patches will regularly be enough to make value trades in the first three turns of the game, especially played in combination with South Sea Captain. Though this may not always be possible, a skilled player piloting this deck should recognize potential means of developing the most value from the cards made available. As the new meta evolves from a contest of aggro and control decks into a contest of tempo decks, players have begun to replace greedy and anti-control cards such as the Lich King and Cairn Bloodhoof with Corridor Creepers, since the new expansion inspires tempo rogue players to streamline the mid-range strategy. Sonya Shadow Dancer has also become a strong replacement for Shaku the Collector as a resource generator, allowing you to recycle minions as combo activators. Though the resources generated by Sonya are more conditional to your board state, the cards generated will always fall more in line with the tempo rogue strategy than what may be randomly generated from Shaku or even Swashburglar. To counter a surge of tempo rogues on the ladder, consider switching to an even more 
aggressive strategy such as Agro Druid, or any low curve archetype that can exploit the tempo swing of Corridor Creeper in combination with Golaka Crawler. The core of the deck is small, yet strategically resilient, enough so that Tempo Rogue is spoiled for choice when it comes to tech options. Cairn Bloodhoof was seen in several of the more popular lists towards the end of the Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion as a sticky turn 6 play that threatens bone mare value. Should the meta become control heavy, whether in tournaments or on the ladder, consider Cairn as a possible addition. In the more aggressive meta, Serenite Chain Gang and Corridor Creeper shine in Tempo Rogue as both synergize strongly with the archetype's control-oriented early game. With several smaller minions to trade into Murlocs and Beasts to retain board control, especially Patches, dropping a 2-0 mana 5-5 body presents the kind of tempo swings that give the deck greater success against the more traditional counters like Aggro Druid. For resource generation, Elven Minstrel is reliable if a player is able to make up for playing a 4 mana minion with low stats. Shaco and Sonya are two other options available to Tempo Rogue, both of which are available to compensate for the deck's lack of draw. Finally, Spellbreaker makes for a solid addition to push damage through Q-Block's early Void Lords, Big Priest's Obsidian Statues, or Minions buffed by Bone Mare. In conclusion, we can see the deck evolving even further as one of the two aggressive staples to have transitioned successfully from the Knights of the Frozen Throne. For players looking for a reliable deck to start the 2018 competitive year, Tempo Rogue has certainly grown to be a consistent favorite for pros and casuals alike. No matter how much it grows in the coming months, we are sure to find Tempo Rogue becoming a strong performer in next month's HCT World Championship in Amsterdam. Thank you for watching this deck introduction. If you enjoyed what you saw in this video, leave us a like and join us in the discussion below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Hearthstone news and Tempo Storm content, including our upcoming pre-2018 meta snapshot.